Hello everybody, Kurt Risch here, and thanks for joining me on One Shepherd. So today we are continuing our reading of the New Testament book of 1 John, chapter 2. My little children, these things I write to you, so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also, also for the whole world. We do have a word study, guys, here. The word is advocate. The Greek here is parakletos, and it is Strong's Concordance number 3875. The Greek word literally means one who is called to our side. This could be a comforter, a consoler, or a defense attorney. In John 1426 and 1526, the Holy Spirit is called our parakletos, our comforter. Here, Christ is called our parakletos, our advocate. While the Holy Spirit works within us to comfort and help us, Christ represents us before the Father in heaven. The two paracletes work together in perfect harmony. Continuing with verse 3. Now by this, we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, he who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this, we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven, you for his name's sake. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of the life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. We have another word study here, guys. The word is anointing. The Greek word is chrisma, and Strong's Concordance number 5545. The Greek term chrisma is related to the title Christ, which means anointed one, and is used in the Greek for the anointing of a high priest. The anointing here depicts the impartation of the Holy Spirit to a person. As Christians now indwelt by the Holy Spirit, we are joined to the anointed one and share in his anointing. Therefore, we can know all things with respect to truth and falsehood because the Spirit lives with us. We know that all we need to know in order to resist the temptations of false teachers and to live godly lives in this world. Continuing with verse 22, who is a liar, but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. 
He is Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you, which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as, as it has taught you, you will abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. Guys, that's it for our reading of the New Testament book of 1 John chapter 2. Thank you so much for joining us. You have a great day and God bless.